Hi, it's Alexander Ewald and this is Minilab 3, Arturia's new MIDI controller. It packs keys, pads, encoders and sliders into a compact device that feels just as much at home in the studio as it does on the road. The 25 mini keys are slightly larger than on most other mini keyboards and they are among the better ones that I've used in this price range. The two touch strips for modulation and pitch are placed above the keybed, which might be an issue for some people. It's worth noting that we now have eight endless encoders instead of 16 on the Minilab Mark II. That's significantly less and we'll see how it affects the analog lab experience later. On the upside, Atoria gives us four sliders, which are pretty rare these days on this type of mini controller. The pads are a bit smaller and softer than many of the competitors, but they work totally fine for some casual drumming. The display is the typical OLED we find in many controllers these days. It's tiny, but it's bright and sharp. The controller is powered and connected to your computer via USB-C, and unlike the Mark II, Minilab 3 has a MIDI output to connect external gear. In DAW mode, Minilab 3 automatically recognizes your DAW and turns into an integrated controller with extended features. This currently works with Live, Bitwig Studio, Logic, FL Studio and Reason. Enabled Live, for example, DAW mode automatically maps the 8 encoders to the macros of the selected device. You can navigate and launch scenes with the main encoder, and trigger clips with pads, which roughly mirror the color of the clips in live. With shift, the main encoder navigates and arms tracks. In a range of view, the main encoder navigates the timeline. Quite convenient. The sliders set volume, A and B send levels, and pan. When I press and hold shift, the pads turn into transport controls. In addition to stop, play, and record, we get a tempo tap and a loop button. When you switch the pads to bank B, they serve as drum pads for Ableton's drum rack. Unlike most drum pads that send out a fixed note, these pads always trigger the drum pads that are currently selected in drum rack. So if I move the selection in the drum pad preview window, the same pad now triggers a different drum. I found DAW mode for life surprisingly powerful. It doesn't feel like a gimmick or afterthought at all, and it contains some useful features that even Ableton Push is lacking. Well done, Arturia. By the way, if your DAW is currently not supported, you still get the basic Mackie Control Universal features. So all the basics, but not the fancy stuff. <laughs> In Analog Lab mode, Minilab 3 serves as an integrated controller for Analog Lab. With the main encoder, you can browse presets, select instrument types and subtypes, and mark presets as favorites. Unfortunately, there is no optional autoload function, so you have to click the encoder each time you want to load a preset. I found this a bit tiring and actually less comfortable than just using my computer keyboard, where I can simply move to the next sound with one tap. According to Arturia, there are currently no plans to add autoload, but they might consider it in the future. Once you load a preset, Minilab's encoders and sliders are automatically assigned to a pre-mapped set of macro controls in the software. The standard mapping is identical with most presets. The upper four encoders are mapped to the macros of the instrument. With synths, these are mostly cutoff, resonance, a combination of decay and release, and some sort of movement like vibrato or LFO filter modulation. To edit these four macros, you have to own the full version of the underlying plugin. Otherwise, you're stuck with them as they are. The remaining four encoders are pre-mapped to the dry-wet level of Analog Lab's effects, and the sliders control the EQ and the main level. So in most cases, the default mapping in Analog Lab uses only four of the 12 available encoders and sliders to control the synth and everything else for effects that are mostly set and forget and don't really need any live tweaking in my eyes. Uh, to me, that feels like a bit of a waste. 
Luckily, you can reassign the remaining four encoders and the sliders to a selection of other parameters quite easily. So it's not that we get less control options compared to Minilab Mark II, but due to the smaller amount of encoders and odd default mappings, some of the available parameters are now hidden behind a few extra mouse clicks. I would prefer if Atoria customized the mappings with a little more attention and dedication to the individual sounds instead of going with a predefined scheme. But that's really more an issue with the Analog Lab software and not with the Minilab 3 hardware. By the way, Atoria will also provide uh, Minilab 3 MIDI mappings for the V-Collection plugins, but they were not available yet when I shot this video. The built-in arpeggiator is fairly standard. With the main encoder, we can set mode, division, swing, gate, tempo, sync, and octave range. With chord memory, you can program a chord, and then play it back with one key. That's all there is to it. No preset chords, scales, or anything like that. But it's quite useful and fun in combination with the arpeggiator and hold button. And finally, before we come to the conclusion, let's take a quick look at the software side of things. As all Atoria controllers, Minilab 3 can be fully programmed. It comes with a software bundle starring Analog Lab Intro, which includes 500 presets from more than two dozen instruments of Atoria's V collection, as well as Ableton Live Lite, piano plugins by Native Instruments and UVI, and more. <laughs> So is Minilab 3 any good? As always, it depends on your use case and expectations. If you already own Analog Lab or you plan to get into the world of Atoria plugins and you're looking for a hardware controller to go along with it, this is a great entry-level option for some hands-on control. The uninspired controller mappings of Analog Lab are a downside though and in combination with the controller feel like a bit of a step back at times compared to the Minilab Mark II. If you need a compact MIDI controller with keys, pads, encoders, and sliders to control your DAW, this one absolutely does the job, but so do many other controllers out there too. What really sets it apart for me is DAW mode. With support DAWs like Ableton Live or Bitwig Studio, Minilab 3 adds some really powerful and useful features that make the music creation process faster and more enjoyable. That's all from me for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about Minilab 3 and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos about music production and gear. Thanks for watching and see you soon.